Um, excuse me? Mm-hmm. What year is it? 1890, last I checked. You little lost, son. You new to Canyon City? Canyon City? Thought I was in Bend. Ah, farewell, Ben. That's about a day's ride west. Listen, I don't know how I got here or how I'm going to get home. Do you think you could help me? I suppose I can take you to Ben after I fix the wagon. Uh, they have a hotel in town. Do they take Apple Pay? Apples. Uh, okay, never mind. I, I guess I don't have any money. Uh, I figure if you can help me and my wife do a few things around the house, I'll let you stay tonight. How'd that sound? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. My name is Zachary, by the way. Columbus Sewell. So, what kinds of things can I help you with? Well, first, you can start by handing me that auger right there. All right. No, the spinny one. So you own this place? Yes. Yes, indeed. Built it back in 1867. Not bad, huh? No, it's not bad at all. I didn't even know black people lived out here. Well, it didn't first, uh, not till I got here back in 62. Oh, so you're not from here originally? Uh, I'm from Washington, a federal city. I was born there in uh, 1822. Before I came here, I had done many of things. Uh, when I was a boy, I volunteered for the Black Hawk War, and then I stayed up in Wisconsin when I was done. Went to California in 49, when they found gold like everybody else. Came up here in 62, when they found gold in Canyon Creek. Oh, so you must have found gold then? Nah, I found better ways to make money. I helped a friend out, Bradford Trowbridge. He homesteaded here. Uh, I helped him out, he let me live on the property, and I bought that wagon you saw before. Here, hey, why don't you get the chopping? So you're a driver? Teamster. I got my own freight hauling business between here and Dell City. I'm up to 12 horses now. I got a good sized trailer to hitch to my wagon. And how long have you been doing that work? Yeah, about 20 years now. In the early days, I mostly transported the mining supplies. It normally takes uh, six weeks for the round trip. But nowadays, it's a little bit shorter. Cargo is different too. All types of things. Furniture, food, things people need to make a permanent place. And business is good. Folks around here depend on me. Uh, I think that's enough firewood. Uh, I got a few more things to do around here. I uh, appreciate if you can help the wife with the clothes. Lisa, this young fella here is gonna stay tonight. Oh. Uh, she's gonna help you with the clothes. You have to show him how to do it though, because he don't know how to do much about anything. I got it. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Zachary. <laughs> My name's Louisa. Pleased to make your acquaintance. How do you do? Oh, very well, thanks. Why don't I show you how I like the washing done, and okay. then I can let you pick up where I left off, and I can get a start on some supper. All right, then. All right, bring it on over here. So you pop in this here washboard. Yeah. Beat it up like it owes you some money. Give a good rinse. Squeeze the life out of it. Then you pop it up on the line. Can you hand me one of those clothespins, baby? You picking up what I'm putting down? I got it. All right. Why don't you show me what you could do? So are there many other black people here in Canyon City? Oh no, I haven't seen many black folks out here since I arrived in 1868. The four of us have been the only black citizens of Grant County for a long while now. Four of you? Mm-hmm. There is Columbus, myself, and uh, my son Thomas and Joseph. Uh, Thomas is 17 now, Joseph's 14. Where are your sons today? Well, if I know my Thomas, he is down at the shop. And if I know my Joseph, he's down there fighting or wrestling with some of the boys there in town. What he needs to do is get himself ready to do some work. Ah, oh, he's real good with horses. And by his age, Thomas was already working with his father. And so, um, do you work? <laughs> of course I 
at work. Give me that thing. Yes, I do the washing. Mm. I tend to the chickens, I tend to the garden, and I do the cooking, of course. I used to do the cooking for Mrs. Moore, but that's plenty enough work for me. Yes, I do enjoy preparing the meals, though, and people seem to enjoy what I cook. So what are you cooking tonight? Well, tonight I'm making some smoked neck bone collard greens, and I'm making some candied yams and some cream rolls oh. to boot. And if you help me finish this up, then I could even bust out some dessert. I'd be happy to do that. Oh, well, that sounds about perfect for me. Oh, honey, here, let me help you. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you missed a spot. Hey, it smells good in here. Oh, well, thank you. I can actually use your help stirring this caramel while I drop in the butter. Sure. I'll trade you. Where'd you say you were from? Oh, well, I live in Oregon, but I'm originally from Virginia. Oh, me too. Yeah? That's right. I was born in Richmond in uh, 1848. Lived there my whole life. Well, at some point, Columbus wound up coming east to visit some family. And uh, then he started telling me about his home he was building and his prospects back in a place called Oregon. You know, we were hitched right after that. I was just 19. So what was town like back then? Well, by the time I arrived back in 1868, it was much smaller by then. Columbus tells me it was a wild place, though. There was 10,000 people back then. So have you ever faced any discrimination here? Well, not personally, no. The ladies in town treat me all fine and good, and everybody loves our boys. I guarantee we don't see as much prejudice as the black folks back in the city do, though. It was a whole lot rougher about a generation ago. In the 1840s and 50s, mm -hmm. they made it so that you couldn't even prospect for land if you were black in Oregon. That's right, can you believe that? Not only that, but you couldn't work for yourself and every other black and Hawaiian and Chinese person had to pay an annual poll tax to boot. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Have things gotten any better? Yes, things did tend to get a little better after the Civil War until they decided not to ratify the 14th and 15th Amendment and make sure that we couldn't even vote for ourselves. And a black person can't marry a white person in this day and age. Well, I'm hoping that things will get better for you soon. Does, does this look about right? Actually, that looks perfect. Why don't you go find Columbus and let him know supper's about ready? Okay. So two years ago, we had the worst snowstorm anybody can remember. 10 feet of snow fell in Central Oregon. I was up in Dale City for the worst of it. You know, we were all stranded where we stood. Snow was everywhere. We couldn't even get back on the road. So I put a plow on the front of my wagon, plowed all those streets all by myself. <laughs> those folks up in Dale City were hollering and cheering. Man, saved a few lives that day. <laughs> Here you go again, telling that story. You know, it's true and everything, but the snow tends to get deeper every time he tells it. I can't even imagine going that far by wagon. Don't y'all ever feel lonely out here? No, we play host to several guests once in a while. Yeah, I used to get letters from my folks back east. I used to tell about all the trouble they were having there. I convinced my cousin Irvin uh, to move west. He stayed for us for a while, then he moved up to Walla Walla. He's a barber up there. And do you know Sarah Winnemucca, the writer? Well, she came back a few summers ago. Uh, I used to know her back when I was just a cook. At any rate, I wish I would have had time more to speak to her. However, she had to get up out of town. There was some white woman who wanted to kill her on account of uh, her husband being killed by a Paiute warrior. Wow, uh, I guess it's a good thing that she had someone like you to warn her and look out for her. Well, we gotta look out for each other, don't we? Yeah. What is it here about you making dessert? Now, who told you that? <laughs> hey. There he is. Hey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just what I was hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go spoiling your supper now, Columbus. Lulu here is famous for her ice cream. She makes ice cream and cake every 4th of July celebration. <laughs> Most around here can't get enough of it. Well, he ain't lying. Mm -hmm. Every time those ladies come to play croquet, they're forever asking me for the recipe. <laughs> oh, Zach, before I forget, yeah. you're gonna sleep in my son's cabin tonight. And I'll wake you up at sunrise before we head to bed. All right? 
Wow, you know, I, I guess I kind of forgot that I even had to get back home. Thank you all again so much for your hospitality. Oh, honey, that's just fine. We're always happy to make new friends.